Good evening. Uh, a last minute impromptu stream just to talk about AHX because it's a lovely tracker. Um, I might have mentioned it in passing. Uh, it connects to ProTracker in a number of ways. Um, and since we're still on the chip tune tip from last time, we will return to Pro Tracking in uh, chip tunes. Uh, AHX is a really good tracker to look at. Not a huge number of people know about it, and um, I thought we'd have a very gentle, low stakes introduction to AHX, formerly <laughs> formerly known as THX when it first came out, and um, the developers claim to have had legal threats from uh, LucasArts. I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> um, THX was the file format of um, the modules originally, and then now the AHX. And uh, yeah, let's have a little look around. It's a pretty standard looking tracker. Um, we've got a list up here of all the patterns. Now these patterns are constructed from individual tracks. So unlike ProTracker, you can have um, there's lots in this one. You can have a different track pattern in each track. I'm not explaining that very well. Uh, in ProTracker, a pattern is four tracks and sixty-four lines. In AHX, a pattern is a collection of four individual tracks, each of which has is one track, 64 lines. And you can mix and match these, and you can arrange them any way you want on the order. Um, it's great for saving space, cuts down on the amount of data, um, the amount of disk space that your node data takes up. If you can say, well, that baseline is going to be the same every pattern. So I'll just type in the number of that mini single track pattern on every line here. And this column here, which looks like in a normal tracker where we might have effects, it kind of is an effect column. It's um, very limited and it may do a couple of other things, but the main thing you use this for is transposing. So, um, find a good example. So if I mute, same way as ProTracker, I'm gonna use Alt Z C and V to mute the channels that I want to hear. I'm going to play this position. That's just a, a bass um, octave jumping up and down. Um, you can see here the command in the transpose column is FE. Um, so switch to edit mode, spacebar, blank that out, and we hear the original pitch of that pattern. And transpose it up again. Two. That's pretty cool. So that's how that works, um, and that's that's emblematic of a lot of the tricks um, that are going on in AHX that let you save space, save disk space, save RAM, um, and that's just an example plucked out there, but um, there are loads of cool tricks for saving space, for optimizing these. The idea is that... Um, a lot of the work, uh, we're, we're using waveforms, not samples. Now, oh, I'm going to need to do a whole session on AHX because a lot of this needs a bit of explanation. Um, in simplest terms, think of this as a synth chip synth tracker rather than a sample tracker. Um, so we don't get uh, to import samples, we don't get to import arbitrary uh, waveforms of complex sound. We define short chip sample waveforms uh, using a process that's a bit like programming a SID chip on a Commodore 64. And AHX was 
designed specifically to mimic the SID chip, uh, sound a bit like the SID chip, um, without the analog filters, of course, but with some pretty cool filters that have characteristics all of their own that I really like, um, and which you can kind of pre-calc by saving a bunch of uh, filter waveforms to a file. So if you were going to use this in a demo or a game, um, that would make preloading a bit quicker. Um, because although it seems really bare bones um, and old school, it will not run on an Amiga 500. <laughs> I think there is a version that will run on an Amiga 500. Um, it was written for Amiga 1200, which is a 68020, sort of. Uh, a version of 68020 and much faster than previous Amigas, um, previous wedge desktop Amigas. And um, I don't think a 68K version was released originally. I know that I requested one and somebody <laughs> hacked it. I think it might have been Buzz of Exotica.org, uh, which is a website, an Amiga archive website you'll know about if you're into Amigas. Um, I haven't seen Buzz for a long time. Anyway, he um, he did a version that worked for me. Maybe there was always a 68K replay, so that it kind of just about works on Amiga 600. So I used to tour with um, the Amiga 600, and I used to use AHX for about half of my set list. Um, and it just about worked. <laughs> Moving uh, The screen update was very slow, but the audio came out fine. Um, so it's CPU heavy. Um, because the Amiga is really good at uh, using, especially with ProTracker, stuff like that. It's really good at loading samples, playing them out um, with no CPU uh, hit to speak of, really. Um, there's some memory usage for the kind of um, DMA throughput of pushing those sample buffers towards Paula, the sound chip. But um, it's kind of, you can think of it as free. Uh, this is not free on the CPU, this costs CPU, um, but it, the file sizes are tiny, much smaller than um, if you recreated one of these tunes in uh, with samples, you would end up with big pitch uh, pulse width mod samples with filters and stuff, and it would come to quite a heavy sample to get the exact same sound. Um, so there's that. Um, and... Chances are, if you download and install AHX, which you can do for free, um, it was written in 95 or 96, I think, by uh, Dexter of Abyss Demo Group. Uh, Pink designed it, um, and Pink has written a tracker recently as well, which I haven't had time to check out. He sent me a, a, a beta of it, and it looked awesome, and it's similar to AHX, it runs on modern systems, but I just have not had time to, to try it out. Um, I should get on that. Pink has also written some amazing tunes, AHX tunes, which I'll play when I can find them, maybe in a different session. Um, yeah, if you download it, uh, your copy will not look as fancy as mine, because I've done some tricks to change the color palette. Normally it's black, white, and gray. I got some pink and green going on, so there you go. Um, not much going on up here. Load and save. Optimize does things that you probably don't want to do until you're sure you've finished the module. It doesn't make it unusable or uneditable, but it does um, shuffle around. Um, if, if it works out that you duplicated some pattern data um, in one of these arbitrary single slots, it'll shuffle them around and suddenly numbers won't be where you thought they were. Um, but that's how optimization usually works in trackers. Um, Save ways to disk, that's the filter pre calc that I was talking about. Uh, clear is a bit like the um, the kill command, and oh, the, it's kill in some pro trackers, clear in others. Um, all of it, just the position, uh, the just the track, or just the instruments. Um, again, as with ProTracker, a good way to get instruments is to open a module that you like and steal all the instruments by wiping all the rest of the data and keeping them, keeping the, the sounds. Um, and up here, load save instrument, delete instrument, and the instrument editor. And here are some options, um, like making it extra 
especially fancy. I think that's a that's weird. I think that's a hack or something I haven't installed properly. I've got a dim recollection of a lot of this. I'll have to remind myself of a bunch of this stuff. Um, yeah, the manual doesn't usually work, but a friend of mine um, painstakingly copied out, wrote, improved, edited um, a manual for this. It's in PDF format. It's got screenshots. Um, that was Lava Burn, um, Dope Fish, as he's sometimes known, possibly on Twitch or Twitter as Dope Fish. Um, yeah, he did a really good manual for this, and that's worth a look. And I will uh, find a link to that if it's still floating around somewhere. And um, it makes clear a lot of things that were never put in the original manual as well. Um, stuff that we just had to find out by trial and error. Um, it's always fun. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look at the instrument editor. Okay, that's a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, these are the only two screens in AHX. The escape key toggles between them. Spacebar on the main screen goes between edit mode and not edit mode. And return on the main screen, or enter, uh, goes between that top bit and that bottom bit for editing and navigation. So arrow keys navigate around as, as you do in ProTracker. Press return. And go up here, navigate around in there. Um, so that is basically a tracker tracker. So up here, um, because you're, uh, for anybody who's just joined, because you're targeting individual tracks with a one track stack of pattern data, um, which means, which is why I've got this. Uh, just some drums and that drum pattern is going to get used a hell of a lot so that's in position one and I throw it in all over the place and um, like I demonstrated before this little effect slot here is where you can put a transpose um, I think you can also put some uh, pattern skip and pattern jump effects in there but it's very limited it's not like the effects you get in the main pattern area um, but I said we'd look at the instrument editor so let's do that I'll turn all the channels back on. Yeah, there we go. Um, so in this one, uh, you open up an instrument that already exists and you start pressing some buttons and you probably will overwrite something important. So you make sure caps lock is on. Uh, test mode here, caps lock is um, stops data from being entered into this and let's you use the keyboard as you normally would. That's a big fat kick drum uh, made out of uh, some fixed noise, no square wave, uh, with a tiny bit of fixed noise at the start. So um, you can just about hear if I play that through the um, the split second of noise at the beginning, pitched and fixed pitch to uh, G sharp four. Um, followed by a sharply descending uh, square wave. That's a that's a MIDI bass and kick. That one's just been used as a kick though, because you can also um, and it's fixed pitch, but Hmm. Um, you'll know if you've done any kind of chip tracking on any platform that um, a really good way of saving space in your pattern is to uh, try and combine your kick drum and your bass instruments into one. And you can do it here. Uh, I'm not doing it in this tune. I've got octave controls just the way I have in Pro Tracker as well up here, the F keys. Um, and a bigger octave range, we'll talk about that later or in a different session when we get really deep into AHX, because now that I've started, I want to get really deep into AHX. 
as long as I can remember how to use it. Um, so return or enter on a note changes it. Uh, toggles fixed pitch on or off. Fixed pitch is great because it means that if you know this is only going to be used for um, a kick drum at a fixed pitch, you put that on and it doesn't matter what note you throw in there or it doesn't matter if you transpose a column to transpose the other notes but not the drums, the drums will stay fixed. That's really handy if you're doubling up or tripling up on what kind of data is in which column. Um, but if I turn the fixed fixedness, if I untoggle fixed pitch on the square wave components, so four in this column, that's the waveform column, four indicates that that note is noise, four here is noise. Um, then we switch to um, uh, square wave, so everything from three onwards, it always uses the last one you put in. Everything from three onwards is a square wave with the filter having been set here and here. Um, well, that's the pulse width and it gets complicated, but um, I'll take the fixed pitch off that and we'll we've still got caps lock on so we can test the sound. It's quite a lot of range in the octave. That's not a good way of testing it because actually we've got a pitch slide down here. It's 270. I'm going to wipe some of this out. I've also got note skip in here. I'll turn that off. Um, if you remember from ProTracker, note skip or edit skip or note add or any one of those names for the same thing, that's where in edit mode, you type a note and the note skip value is how many lines it will jump down by to the next one. Great for putting in um, for four drums, you just put it on eight and then just hammer that key and it fills them all in. But we're, uh, we're not doing that. Um, I've turned that off in here. <laughs> It's a pretty standard way of doing um, a nice economical um, kick drum and uh, bass in originally in um, on the C64 in a SID chip. Um, the same principles applied in um, LSDJ. A lot of Game Boy musicians use the same trick to save space, um, and you can match up that same bass instrument in a different slot with, uh, with a snare drum or the hat. Um, and you can really get, a, if the speed's right and the release cut and all that stuff is right, then it can, it, all it needs to do is fool the ear um, into hearing both of the sounds at once. Um, Etc. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but actually, um, it sounds like more of a snare drum because we've lost that component that was the. Uh, actually, let's add it back in again. Pitch these. Right. So I've um, I've toggled back the fixed pitch on these notes. Now these are. Um, they have pitches, but they're fixed relatively, so um, they provide a control means of detuning that kick over time. And when I took those off, suddenly um, that bit of it pitched up, put them back on, and now we've got that nice fixed MIDI kick. And um, and the the sort of note component only begins here now because that's where we've taken the fixed pitch off so so there's that um, other cool tricks you can do in here um, I loaded a little bit different module um, so we can have a look at some ops ops so we love the ops guitar uh, it's pushing it a bit um, but it makes sense in the context of the track, which is another one of mine. Uh, it's a cover of a really awesome real life track, IRL music, proper music with, with guitars. Um, 
Um, oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite instruments that I've made in. Um, and that's from another tune of mine called Booster, um, and it's one that I always go back and raid for instruments um, to save me making new ones. If I know that an instrument works, I'm not going to waste time making a new one. That's a very nice snare. Um, and again, we're not using samples, so this is just um, these are just the the parameters to make a sound like this. If you type in those, if you make your copy of AHX look like that, you'll get the same sound. Um, you can load and save instruments separately. It's cool to build up a, a stockpile of AHX um, samples. Um, you can also use them in Hively Tracker, which I'll talk about later. It's a different tracker, but it, it's back compatible with AHX. Um, Arp, that looks good. Oh, what a very nice arp. I love this arp. So, you probably figured out by now that um, uh, a lot of the stuff that we have had to do in hand, uh, by hand in ProTracker um, gets kind of abstracted to this new um, synthesized instrument format. It's kind of semi-synthesized. Um, but all this stuff has been run on the fly. If you, you can change these live, in fact, and I used to do that in my show. I used to... Um, I would be playing along with some of the melodies at times, or I'd be doing a bit of bass line on a separate synth. Sometimes I would go into the um, instrument section here and just manually change the filter in real time. Um, so it's, it's calculating that. Um, on the fly. That's pretty cool. Um, so I've got, yeah, I've got test mode on. So what we've got here is um, an arpeggio laid out. Um, it's a bit easier to actually lay out an arpeggio if you're not terribly comfortable with um, semitones and tones and, and hex and all the other things that you have to know about to get the arp you want in ProTracker. And in ProTracker you only get three notes you get your original note and you get two others and it cycles around those here you can have as many as you want um, because what happens is when you fire that note in a pattern it runs this and anybody who's touched lsdj in the game boy knows exactly how this works because lsdj was hugely influenced by ahx tracker um, i'm told um, and yeah i mean it's pretty it's pretty obvious but especially um lsdj took it to a whole other level in terms of um giving you all kinds of tables that you could apply to other things that were going on in the instrument um run them at different speeds all sorts of cool stuff um so yeah you basically you don't even it's not a specific up command that you use you just make an instrument that is in itself an ARP because it plays a bunch of notes um, or it plays a bunch of relative notes. Now remember this isn't, we haven't toggled the fitch, fixed pitch here, so... So all of these notes, um, they're not notes relative to the key of the tune, the rest of the tune, they're notes relative to the starting note. So it doesn't really matter what they are um, because any note you hit at a different pitch. Um, this one is just um, three semitones higher, and then that's, you know, they're the intervals between those. Um, and then at the end, we've got five. Actually, for all it looks impenetrable, a lot of these commands are explained on the screen um, in empty, in otherwise empty space. So five jump to step. Pretty straightforward. Five zero zero loops back to the beginning and loops this around forever. That. <laughs> Hi Kato, yep. I did um, briefly cover the <laughs> the manufactured controversy of uh, THX and AHX because I'm sure <laughs> LucasArts were really worried. Um, so that just goes on forever. But um, 
you don't have to waste space in the instrument editor with things like uh, volume slides and the things that we do in Pro Tracker to um, to kind of hack ADSR envelopes into samples um, because you've got a whole section over here on the other side of the screen for just that. Um, attack, decay, sustain, release and for each of those we get a length and a volume. Um, so you can hear that fading out and then a uh, bit of sustain and then it decays or decays first and then and then it sustains at a certain pitch and then the release um, keeps it going at volume 16 out of 64 um, and if we put that down to zero it'll just go down to nothing in the time we've got up the release a bit and it'll take longer to get there yep. so um, just like a synthesizer um, there are other things that go on here that'll take a bit of explanation that I won't get into tonight. Um, and speed and length are handy. Um, length could save you, um, actually, hmm. I'm going to try something because I can't remember how this works. Yeah, length sort of artificially limits the um, the length of this. If you don't need to do a jump back to the start, then that doesn't really matter. Um, there are good reasons to use the length. Um, and then the hard cut will cut off that note when it reaches its length and stop any uh, release or residual sound. Um, so that's quite handy. But for now, for us, for this kind of up, all we need is for the length to be longer than the number of rows we have so again it's a tracker within a tracker um, so we've got two trackers within trackers we've got the position editor at the top um, which is a tracker containing all the stuff down here and down here in the um, in the note editor note editor we have um, we have it looks like a single pattern, like in Pro Tracker, but it's not. It's four individual things dictated by what's up here. That's tracker within a tracker. And then the instrument tracker is a tracker within the tracker. So, um, yep, that's that's cool. Um, and the nice thing about this is that instruments themselves cost so little disk space and and. Um, and RAM for if the files loaded into RAM. Um, that if you if you want a bit more flexibility in uh, your effects column, you've only got one effects column. Um, you've got two in Hively, but we'll talk about Hively at another time. You have got one effects column. Remember, we we talked a lot in the Pro Tracker session about um, how a lot of the tricks are about um, high syntax terror. A lot of the tricks are about uh, figuring out how you can um, double up on effects when you've only got one effects column. Um, so it might be that you make a duplicate of the sample and lower the volume on the second sample. So you don't have to waste your effects column on a C command to lower that volume for a delay. You just play the other sample instead. Um, get a, you get away with it. Um, it does what you want, but you've cost yourself a bit more in the sample. If that's a, you know, if that's a um, 50 kilobyte sample, doubling that is quite a drain on um, resources. So in here, um, instruments are basically free in terms of uh, resources. So just duplicate the instrument, save it, load it into another slot, save it to a file, load it into another slot. That's how it works. Um, there might be a, I don't think there's a built-in copy and paste. Or you can just type it out again and give it a lower overall volume or change the volume in here. You can create your own tremolo effects and stuff like that by running at a higher speed multiplier. You could run with volume commands in here. That's a C, a C volume command. Um, you can get funk time in an instrument, but not in the pattern by running, um, <laughs> running the speed 
a, a, a bunch of speed commands in here. Um, and then you have um, the modulator and pitch slides and stuff that goes on with the filter, which is a an entire subject area to cover at some point. Um, and then um, back in now you got triangle and sawtooth as well, not just square waves. Um, hi, Mimbrook64. Hello. So, um, lots of possibilities given that this is a very characteristic and distinct sound and it helps to think of it as inspired by uh, the SID because that's what it was. It wasn't supposed to be a replica of the SID chip. It just is supposed to work in a similar way. Um, you did some PWM and ProTracker, I think, in the last episode. Uh, yeah, um, and I love PWM. AHX is perfect for that stuff. Um, it's um, at least at least one or two of you have seen me play live long ago, and um, a lot of that is me with a Roland SH101 with loads of pulse width modulation on it because I love I love that, and, um, and it fits perfectly with everything I do in. AHX and ProTracker, which is mostly full of pulse width modulation. Um, so, yeah, this tune is um, one I wrote quite recently, actually, within the past couple of years. So I really had to remind myself how to use AHX. I've forgotten half of that again, but I'm sure I can pick it up quite quickly. Um, like, I can't remember... Most of the commands in the actual pattern data are the same. Um, volume slides, uh, EC4 is a note cut, the way it would be in ProTracker. Um, it works slightly more usefully and predictably in here. Um, although there are other things that make it less predictable. Two and one are pitch slides down and up. Um, volume slides and F commands for speed. Most of them are the same. You can, there is even a... Um, not sure where it is, but there is a feature for importing ProTracker mods, um, which saves most of the note data, strips away the samples, and then you build a bunch of instruments to fill in. So if you know what's coming and you've got a bunch of instruments saved, then I've never bothered to do it, but you could um, convert a ProTracker module into an AHX module with a lot of, a lot of work and messing around. Um, so yeah, this is a, um, I'm not sure if I have a means of playing, uh, the original. Let me see if I can. Hmm. No, I'm not sure if I can. Um, it's a tune by a band called Twin Beams. It's T-W-I-N-B-E-A-M-S. Um, who are, uh, friends of mine in Newcastle in the UK. Um, Oscar is a drummer but does synths and stuff with them. Athol, his brother, is a, an amazing guitarist and the bassist is John Pope, a good friend of mine who's a fantastic jazz and free improv bassist. Um, and it's a sort of vaporwave um, kind of live action outfit. Um, and I thought I would do them a cover in AHX and um, I am going to try and find the original uh, because I'm not sure what that noise was. Pope is the boss. It's true. Um, this just might kill my CPU and um, melt everything. So if you get this at all, it'll be over my, my mic.
So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, and condensing that down into AHX was actually easier than I think it would have been to condense down into uh, into a protractor mode. Um, because really, this is this is impressionism uh, in in painting terms. Then you, you are, especially with the arpeggiators, um, especially running a five or six note up, you um, you can't fit that layering of textures and, and harmonies in, but you can give a clear sense of those um, by the way you put those arps together. I'll run this cover for a bit. Um, Sorry, Rog B. Um, it is very LSD, LSDJ, no chains though. Um, I'm just trying to think back to uh, my Game Boy's gone. I think all my Game Boys are in kids' bedroom. Um, yeah, uh, chains let you trigger groups, tr trigger chains of patterns, don't they? Um, and then you arrange chains into a song, is that right? Um, I have used, I do have LSDJ and I've used it over the years, but not extensively enough to um, be able to remember. Um, so no, essentially there's nowhere near that kind of flexibility like you would, um, like you would want if you were performing with LSDJ live. Um, you can, well, not me, maybe not you, but people can, um, do some wizardry with that that uh, it allows them to do and it's a lot more basic on here um no this stuff was intended for live performance but um yeah i'm not sure if you could replicate the way that works but i think again i mean the first first full length um ahx tune i did in the early 2000s um I remember planning the whole thing out on paper because I was so baffled by the way these arbitrary single channel commands went into the thing. Um, I do have a notebook somewhere with, that was Plesiosaur, um, I have a notebook with that uh, <laughs> meticulously drawn out, uh, not meticulously, um, slapdash drawn up. But um, you get into the habit and then you kind of, uh, the trickiest thing to remember is uh, not to right over something that you've already used. So in the end, I start to think in blocks of um, four, eight or 16 um, of unused patterns. And then just to avoid any, to give myself space to clone and, and um, tweak a pattern that's in an earlier block of numbers that I've used. This doesn't help with that, an, exp an example. So I'll, I'll anyway. It's possible to keep track of what's going on, but it can get out of hand. Um, but yeah, this tune, um, um, from the original, I decided, well, okay, um, let's see what's happening with the bass and really... Um <laughs> Um, so it's got a real C64 uh, vibe. It's got a real um, outrun vibe, which is totally 
in the minds of the guys who composed it. Um, and the reason we're not hearing it with that nice funk tempo is that when you mute these speed commands, I'll talk briefly about funk tempo. I have covered it in previous um, streams, but not very well. Um, so F, the lower F commands, usually F, F1 to F20 or um, F16 are uh, for setting the speed um, relative to the, the V blank rate, essentially the speed that the machine runs at. So a tick is a subdivision of a line on here and how many ticks you want to run per... Um, <laughs> I get worse at explaining this every time I try and do it. Um, it's not the same as BPM, is what I'm getting at. But we don't really deal in BPM in AHX, we just deal in speed multipliers. So the overall, the global speed multiplier is 1, and I'll show you what cool stuff you can do with that um, in a while. Um, all you really need to know that you, is that you can kind of approximate the speed you want by using these F commands. If you alternate the F command, then you get a really funky syncopated sort of... Um, it's possible to tell here, because you would need something percussive really with a higher resolution than that. That's just a bunch of ops being triggered. Um, but if I play the percussion line by itself... So because the F commands are only processed when that channel is unmuted, which I think is... It's not a bug, but it would be nice if they were processed. Um, anything that's not audible is just not processed through the um, the pattern data parser. So if I unmute this and then mute it again, it might run at the slow speed. Anyway, I'll unmute these both. So if you, um, if you are a student of funk, I'm sure they exist, if you go back and listen to some Cool in the Gang or something like that, um, you would think, oh, I'm going to have to get the drum machine uh, on maximum funk, I'm going to have to have the swing turned right up, I'm going to have to sync a bit everything. Actually, you don't. You'll find that um, the drum parts, for the most part, are very straight and solid. Very solid. Um, if you listen to... Uh, uh, I did a I could do the cool on the gang cover in Fast Tracker. I'll we'll have a look at that sometime. Um, but yeah, actually, it's um, uh, keep the keep the kick drum and, and and the snare really, really, really steady, and all the funk is in the way the other voices. Some some of the hats and things, but mainly um, the bass and, and um, chords and things interact with that solid beat. So because um, the funk timing doesn't affect the percussive sounds here, because we've got six as a, as a kick drum, and that's appearing every eight lines, as you can see. And every time the six is on, there's an F8 on the speed command on the other side. Um, so that's always going to stand steady. Uh, and the syncopated or the swung beat and the snap you get is going to be on the. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Row 3 here has an F5 command. That's going to pass much quicker than row 4, which has an F8 command. So it's always going to be stop and start like that. Um, so it would be great for doing a Strathspey if you wanted to, but it's also great for doing funk. And it's usually in tracking circles called uh, funk timing. And you can do other things. You can space those out. You can run the whole pattern more slowly. Um, you can really accentuate that swung beat by increasing the high F commands. Um, so the fast F commands are, are the lowest numbers, so F1 and 
F10 would be pretty crazy. Um, but you can tweak that until you're happy. And um, maybe we need a whole, an entire funk session um, on ProTracker. Uh, lots of good candidates for analyzing tunes there. Uh, Reed and Mr. Tempest and, um, <laughs> sorry, is this called Tempest? But um, he has a tune called Mr. Kato, can you remember what that? Mr. Big or something, it's a, it's a very nice tune. You might have done it with Reed. Um, yeah, and then beyond that, it was really just constructing lots of nice ops and um, making sure that there was enough, that the whole thing was going at a high enough speed that I could get in some of Athel's guitar licks or get an approximation of those guitar licks. And um, <laughs> guitars, guitars are tricky one to synthesize at the best of times, particularly tricky um, if you've just got a square wave. Um, so let me find... Oh, still got two channels muted. So um, I try to go for some uh, guitar-y type of um, looseness and pitch to suggest string would be in bent and pinch harmonics and stuff going on here. So um, so it's not that convincing, but the best you can do really is to um, make sure all those notes are bend up a Poggiatura kind of things. They start lower than you want and then they, then they slide up without being too accurate about it. Um, me, 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 that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> who am I kidding? It does not sound like a guitar, but it fulfills the purpose. Uh, it does what the guitar was doing in the solo uh, at the end of the original. So um, I was really happy with it because um, the the feel of the of Twin Beam's original put me in a very um, outrun kind of mood. And um, and this feels like bringing it right back home again to that, uh, to that feel. It feels like how it would have been done on a, on a SID chip. And actually, um, I mean, I forgot that I had two channels muted there because it still sounded pretty, um, pretty full. Uh, so that's, that's only two channels audible um, because again, we're using all of those old um, SID tracker chips, uh, chips, tips, tricks. SID chip tricks where you've only got three channels and you've really got to pack in um the stuff and again we've talked about it before i'll talk about it again uh limitations um oh nice glad the stream has been run through a chaos pad um there might be a session that involves a chaos pad one of these days we'll see thank you thank you um yeah uh so bass and drums in one track always always save some space <laughs> And then this track is putting in hard work as the main up track and the funk timing clock, essentially. Um, so it always has to be there. There always has to be, in every one of these rows up here, there always has to be a pattern at the end that has these F commands in. Um, it's a hack. It would be cool if it was kind of built in swing timing in the module, but it wasn't built in way back in the day. and. That's that's the way it is. We'll live with it. I mean, a whole section of the tune here where I'm not even using one of the patterns. <laughs> um, it's got more than I know what to do with. Uh, what's going on in here, though? I must have resisted the temptation to put a delay pattern in for this line. I don't normally resist that temptation because I love delay. Um, but I can do it either by, um, I haven't actually done any, 
any editor in this today. Let's do the same things as we do in ProTracker. Mark the track, copy it to the buffer. Let's control B, arrow keys, and then control C. Move to the next track, um, move it down a bit, three, four lines, something like that. Um, edit mode, control P to paste. Unmute it. So um, this is a good example. Normally we'd want this to be at a lower volume, um, but we're using these commands. We're using a pitch slide and then a, um, a portamento, a tone portamento. So the best thing to do would be to make sure we had a duplicate of this instrument that was at a quieter level. Ah, we have, I've done it. It's called, so that instrument's called no vib, which means there's no vibrato on it. Um, and right next to it in slot 15, we've got no vib quiet, all, all caps for some reason, uh, which is the same except up here, instead of 44, it's at 22 volume, it's at half the volume. So cool, that means we can use that. I actually planned ahead there. Oh, I'll copy the whole pattern, which I didn't do. delay here and I'm gonna go through this and um, let's skip to zero actually I don't need to put that um, instrument command in again because this is all tone portamento we're just using the, the tone commands to slide the pitch of the note around like a massive pitch bend um, so same as we do in Pro Tracker, same as we did last time and I'll show you again next time um, so I'm going to check if it's re-triggered. No, it's not. So I can run that position. I must have thought that delay was either excessive or unnecessary in uh, in that in that bit. But um, I want a little bit different module. Um, a few more of mine. I think this is in 2014 live. I must have done a show in 2014. I can't remember where. It might have been at my local comic book store in the basement as a one last hurrah for Cyphers. <laughs> um, is that what it was? Maybe. Uh, yeah, so I must have I threw all my the AHX tunes that I normally do for live into a folder into a drawer called 2014 live. Um, and yeah, get this one on the go. Um, let's see what this. Right, so this is slightly different. Um, uh, which the downstairs and traveling man. Who's this? My sixty-four. I'm sorry. I'm. Um, I. Um, misidentifying that nickname and I need to figure out um, what I'm missing here but um, oh bootleg of the comic book store gig I don't think anybody um, recorded that um, that was fun actually um, yeah that place is good. I think we'll use that basement for Magic the Gathering tournaments now which is probably um, a better a better use for it um, because I'm not um, I were we talking about um about virtual idols by any chance? <laughs> um, was that 2014? Feels like either it was like longer ago than that. Sorry, I'm just aging visibly on screen um yeah the interesting thing about this if it's interesting is that it is running at a two times speed multiplier um that's interesting because at the cost of even more cpu 
and this really rinses a, a, an Amiga 600. Um, you can run everything at double the speed, including um, things like vibrato and um, instrument tables. And you can slow them down to compensate, but it's grand because it gives you much more resolution to do things in between. So you can... Um, no. Everything sounds pretty, pretty reasonable and pretty normal so far. But you can do things like this. You can run those modulations at crazy speeds. If I run that even higher. So that's about as fast as you'd be able to get a pulse width mod to, to run uh, uh, at single speed and then that sort of thing. Um, similar things on C64. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it was, it usually worked, um, but if I ran one of these tunes live, I couldn't touch anything. You know, I said um, that I sometimes go in and tweak um, filter values and stuff live. Um, actually, I did used to tweak them on, a, on double speed tracks. I think I had to get myself into that editor window before I started uh, and then just be very careful. Um, does AHX suffer from ADSR bugs like it does in C64 land? That's always a problem we have to work around in multi-speed tunes. Um, not, I don't recall any problems that that wouldn't have occurred um, normally. Um, if there are problems in AHX, they're normally um, due to the filter. Um, and they feel and sound like the kind of problems you sometimes get when you're trying to deal with the with the SIDS filter. Um, like, and they're not the same problem because this is entirely software, um, but they have the same kind of, I think it's just coincidence that, um, that the way they manifest themselves, the way some of those clicks and sometimes just the filter stops working and never works again. It's the way the pre-calc's done or something. Um, I guess it's analogous to the way sometimes um, your SID chip might just not like a certain value um, after a certain different value or a hard cut that never cuts properly or something. Um, I've had many C64s and many SID chips and even a SID station, but I'm nowhere near experienced enough with the SID chip to be able to pronounce on that. But um, yeah, uh, I'll run this, this mega high speed um, tune and we'll see what happens. Uh, this is one of my favorites, actually one of my favorite AXX, AHX tunes that I've, that I've done. I don't know if it has been heard very much. I can't remember. I don't think I released it in any big way. Um, tracking multi-speed and gut tracking means a release stage can mess up in subsequent notes somehow. Yeah, that's, it's always about the release or the, or the cut um, in AHX as well. And, and again, I'm not sure there can't be any kind of technical relationship. Um, maybe it is just at different speeds. Um, something doesn't get processed properly and I'm beyond my, um, beyond my expertise there. But, um, yeah, this is called the Galactic Olympic Opening Ceremony theme. Um, that I wrote for no reason at all. Um, but as I was writing, it sort of wrote itself. I just was put in mind of um, some <laughs> saccharine, obscenely optimistic um, 70s futuristic space vision of utopian um, triumph. Not the kind of thing I normally spend time thinking about. It's usually a lot darker. But, um, but I had fun writing it and I'll play it.
this is oh, it's just loads of cuts, loads of uh, note cuts at slightly different um, tick intervals. Um, and there's a volume drop there. I mean, it's, they're running fast enough that the EC4, the not cut 4 command, probably isn't having any effect because I'm pretty sure the source of note is cutting it off before then at a two speed multiplier. But there you go. Um, this might have been built on the, on the back of, a, of another multi speed mod I did that's way more obnoxious um, than this one. Yeah, that's about as close as you can get to mimicking um, a SID chip in full filtery glory. Um, and the wheels fall off a bit at the extreme ends of that filter range, as you can hear, those little clicks and pops. But they, after a while, <laughs> you ignore them, they just become part of the character of AHX. That's more straightforward. I mean, that's not a filter, that's just a um, pulse width mod. Maybe it is a fast filter mod. It's kind of academic because they're not real filters. Um, it's got a more gentle filter mod on the go. Um, yeah, a um, bit scattershot. Introduction to AHX as, as usual, but um, if anybody's interested, I'll do a, a more detailed session on actually getting something up and running, getting started, um, figuring out where you could go with it, um, whether it's right for you, um, because it might be that what you need to do is load up Goat Tracker and do some three-channel SID stuff, or some six-channel dual SID stuff, or um, whatever you need to do. But um, I wish I was better at Goat Tracker than I am, but I'm not. I'm very poor at it. Um, I wish I was better at SID Wizard than I am, and I just haven't invested the time. Um, but hey, there are other people doing CSIC. I'm not going to get into <laughs> other platforms' territory um, on this stream. This is all about Amiga, because that's what I happen to have right in front of me. Um, but yeah, as ever, um, find yourself an emulator, WinUAE on Windows, uh, FSUAE on everything else, and Windows. Um, and get hold of AHX which stands for Abyss's Highest Experience. THX used to stand for the highest experience. Experience. Um, uh, install it, or just run it. Um, have a go. Um, if you don't have any hardware, any Amiga hardware, you don't need to go out and buy hardware. If this was a C64 channel and we were doing SID tracking, I would say yeah, it'd be nice to have a proper C64 um, with a real SID chip in it. A decent set chip. They're all pretty decent. People fuss over R4 and R, well, you know they're all decent if they work. <laughs> um, but don't do that because there's nothing about Amiga hardware that's un, that's inherently uh, unique or has any analog component or is qualitatively better than running on an emulator. Um, save your money, have fun, use the emulator. If somebody gives you an Amiga, great. Um, Check it out, have fun with it. Um, I would hate for anybody to go at today's prices, I would hate for anybody to watch my stream and then go and buy um, an Amiga off eBay. <laughs> um, just hold on to your money until they get a bit cheaper again. Um, I haven't said that, they're lovely keyboards and they light up and hey, it's nice to hold things. Um, yeah, I'm, as you can see, this is run out of steam because to deal with this properly, I think we'll need a bit more time and a bit of a plan rather than me just deciding with two minutes to go. Um, so Raspberry Pi 3 runs 1200 pretty well. I might give it a pop. Cool. I have a very old Raspberry Pi, the first, and I haven't done anything. Oh, I do have a... I do have a Game Boy here. There we go. And it's got LSDJ in. Um, and it's got a very fancy blue screen. Um, 
and it works. Let's go and hold it near my mic. Well, clearly didn't go anywhere that tune, but hey, there you go. Um, yeah, the Raspberry Pi. Um, I haven't run uh, UAE on one and should because um, that'd be fun. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3 is great for Amiga, most powerful Amiga I own. Fair enough. But I use the Mr. Oh, yeah, FPGA unit for more tracking. Uh, more for tracking can run both Amiga and C64 supporting MIDI, and the C64 core also allows dual SIDs too. Cool, that's the. Um, that's, is that the big yellow cart? Or am I getting confused with the uh, C64 forever? I'm not sure. Um, oh no, I do know the one you mean. And yeah, you can load all these different cores in. That's that's awesome. Um, I will... Chameleon FPG, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Um, yeah, it's mad that people are um, spending so much on accelerators when you just abstract the whole lot to to FPGA. <laughs> um, especially when most of these add-ons for real hardware are FPGA based. But hey, um, I understand the gear lust for um, for the real deal. I can I can understand that. So um, one thing that I'm not happy with FSUAE for a number of reasons. It doesn't deal nicely with my mouse drivers um, uh, on the Mac and when UAE won't run and I don't want to run it in parallels or whatever but I have um, been trying to learn some AMOS stuff and throw a music disc together and um, I where's my I tried to I thought well you know it'd be quicker doing this on um, on PC and an emulator but actually um, but the mouse being dreadful and the keyboard being not quite what I like. Um, it is something I will, <laughs> I will just do on hardware. Um, because this is really me doing something that I always wanted to do and never did. And, uh, and that is make either a demo or a music disc by myself with my own art and my own <coughs> terrible code. This is Amos Pro. A little bit fancier than Amos, still. It's fancy basic. It's um, it's a long way from assembly language. Um, but where did I get it to the weekend? That's oh, that doesn't look great because it's so it's such bright pink. Um, webcam doesn't like that amount of pink. Um, there we go. But hey, um, it felt really good to display some graphics, to, to do some graphics and um, deluxe paint, um, which is where I did this. This is a logo for a, a demo group that I started but never actually got around to starting. Um, and um, sort of sort of got an AHX replay library on the go. I mean the nice thing about AHX, like I said at the start, files are very small. Um, so you can fit loads of them into a music disc. If you want to keep that music disc tight and floppy disk um, kind of go, kind of uh, size which there's no need for at all. But if you did, just for the crack, then um, AHX would be a good choice. You could get loads of uh, tunes on, on a disc. Um, um, eh, the library for uh, Amos seems okay, but um, I've forgotten how to get out of it. Oh, I think I put a fade out on it as well, did I? Let's see. Um, Bypass the fade out for some reason. Anyway, yeah, so like I can't really preach about um, 
save any money on avoiding hardware because sometimes, um, especially that, that was just me thinking, I always wanted to be able to, <laughs> to have done something um, like that, a demo or a music disc or a character or something, and I'd never done it on the Amiga. Um, and uh, that's, yeah, actually kind of making that hardware do something takes a box <laughs> takes an emotional box um that doesn't uh that isn't rational at all or anything um what do you think of gear tell uh, a new beginning one and two tunes they're amazing of course jazz cat is amazing jazz cat is amazing um but gear teller made those two hx tunes and i'm still blown away by them says keto you're absolutely right they are amazing um Oh dear, um, Alan Partridge is on. I'm supposed to be finished. This is supposed to be short. Uh, my wife's got it on pause and she's waiting for me to go and watch Alan, which is very kind of her, waiting for me to finish my stream so we can watch Alan Partridge. Um, yeah, they're amazing. Um, read what Keto says in the chat and check out tunes by those guys. Um, and we'll come back to AHX. We're not finished with AHX. Um, we will, uh, you will hear more from AHX. And, uh, and I will also um, show and talk about uh, Topfish or Lava Bones uh, manual that he made, which is amazing and um, really demystifies the whole thing. I think AHX is one of the easier chip trackers to get into um, alongside, you know, I'm not, this isn't a qualitative judgment. It is not better or worse than, than LSDJ or Goat Tracker or any number of, of other things. I found it the easiest because it inherits a lot from Pro Tracker in terms of the design. And even though some stuff wasn't well documented in its manual, now that Lava Burn has made some of that clear, and now that we've gone through and found a few gotchas and bugs, and um, they're they're in there and well documented. We did that about twelve years ago, maybe longer. Um, it makes it much easier to get to get into this and to have fun with it. And I find it's um, it's the time to chip tune <laughs> from opening it dry, uh, opening it cold. Time to chip tune is, I think, lower than in some other editors. Um, maybe with the exception of LSTJ, but um, yeah, we'll have a more structured one. Uh, thank you all for watching. And um, uh, uh, Twitter Echo Level is where you find me and where I will shout about um, streams with a bit more notice than I gave tonight. This was top of my head kind of thing and thank you for uh getting involved yeah all right so we'll wind it up now i'm not going to play out because um because partridge um and tomorrow tuesday Derry goes on tomorrow um remember when tv was like linear and on at a fixed time and you had to it's, it's crazy <laughs> anyway cheers good night <laughs>